Hello, this is Dave Myers with Paper Trail Financial. This is going to be a brief introduction to using your QuickBooks reports to calculate the average number of days inventory is on hand. With some minor modifications, the information needed is contained on the balance sheet and the income statement. There are two ratios to calculate. First, divide the cost of goods sold by the average balance of inventory to determine how many times inventory turned over during the period being reviewed. The ratio that calculates the inventory days outstanding is 365 divided by the inventory turnover ratio. This will show how many days on average it takes for inventory to turn over in a year. I'll start by going to the report menu and generating the profit and loss report. Because it's a sample file, it's dated in the future. This sample file goes through December 15th. In order to get 12 months of data, I'll change the beginning date of the report to December 15th of the previous year. I'll also change the columns to months. And I'll export the report to Excel. Now that it's in Excel, I'll fix the column width. I also want to narrow the report to fit the screen, so I'll highlight the columns on the left and merge the rows across. To move the page header, I'll unmerge the first three rows. Then I'll use the alignment group to center them across the selection. This allows me to shrink the column holding the row headings. Going back to QuickBooks, I'll generate the balance sheet report. I'll modify the report and change it to the same one year period as the income statement. I'll also display the results by month. When I export it to Excel, it will open a new file since you can't export to an Excel file that's already open. I'll highlight the entire balance sheet, copy and paste it onto a new worksheet in the existing open Excel workbook. To fix the column widths, I highlight the affected columns and click between any two columns to resize them. I also need to make the same modifications as on the profit and loss. I'll merge the row heading cells across. Then I'll unmerge the top three rows. And I'll center the page header. Now I can collapse the row heading so the report can fit on the screen. Because I'll refer back to these reports, I'll label the worksheets. The profit and loss, the balance sheet, and I'll create a new sheet and call it ratios for the calculations. I'll copy over the relevant information so we can see it on one page. First I'll copy the date column headers from the profit and loss. I'm going to give labels to the rows for the information I'm going to get from the reports. Purchases because this is the COGS account that contains the cost of inventory sold and inventory for the monthly balances of the inventory account. From the P&L, I'll highlight, copy, and paste the purchases COGS balance onto the ratio sheet. And I'll go to the balance sheet and do the same for the inventory account. Now I'll label our relevant ratio information. Purchases, average purchases, 
average inventory, inventory turnover, and inventory days. I'll add some cell styles to enlarge the font so we can see it better on the recording. For purchases, we use the total amount from the profit and loss statement. For average purchases, I'll insert the average function and select the range for the monthly result. Average inventory is done the same way. Insert the average function and select the range of inventory. As I showed earlier, the inventory turnover ratio is the total purchases divided by the average inventory. and the inventory days ratio for the one-year period is 365 days divided by the turnover ratio. I'll decrease the decimal places here and increase the overall font as well. Now at a glance these figures show there's a great deal of room for improvement. The average monthly purchases and cost of goods sold is $14,000 compared to a $99,000 average inventory balance. This means that, on average, inventory is turning over less than twice a year, or every 193 days. To get a better look at the trend in inventory turnover, I'll insert an area chart. When I choose Select Data, I can highlight the inventory range for the chart. I'll also label the range as Inventory Levels. And I also want to include the monthly purchases from Cost of Goods Sold for comparison. I don't like to have the two sets of data overlapping, so I'll change the purchases data to a line. And I'll increase the line width to make it more visible. I can also move the information onto a new worksheet and enlarge it to give it a more dashboard type of appearance. Charts can be moved, but they remain linked to the underlying data. Ranges of data can be copied using the camera tool, and they also remain linked to the underlying data. When viewing the trends in inventory, the proportion of inventory to sales of inventory is evident. The blue area above the red line represents the excess inventory, and although sales of inventory remains relatively constant the majority of the year, inventory levels climb for the first five months of the period. In the second half of the year, inventory balances decline and purchases improve in the last two months. There are numerous incentives for a business to increase inventory levels such as quantity discounts or scarcity of supply. But there are some risks involved. Depending on the type of goods, there is the potential for spoilage or obsolescence. And there almost always is a cost involved, either direct or indirect, for increases in storage needs.